I was out on a walk and I came around the corner and there I saw it. The glorious Mount Rainier. It's my favorite mountain. <laughs> I love it so much. And there's just something about it every time I see Mount Rainier, especially if I can just stop and just get a good look at it. Uh, man, I, it just makes me want to worship. And so that's what I did. I just started praising God. He is the one who sculpted that mountain. He is the painter of that mountain. He paints it with sunsets and he paints it with sunrises. Of course, I've seen more of the sunsets and the sunrises, but it's so beautiful. I just love that mountain. And because it's so big and lofty and majestic, it just makes me think of our big and lofty, majestic God. So I'm out on this walk and I just keep going across the street and went over to a, a sidewalk and I looked up. You're not gonna believe this. Mount Rainier disappeared. I was walking down a tree-lined sidewalk and the trees weren't big. They were maybe, maybe 10 feet tall at the most. And Mount Rainier was hidden by them. Mount Rainier, this huge mountain. And from my perspective, the mountain had disappeared. We're gonna come back to that a little bit later. If you got your Bible, would you look up Romans 5.3? Uh, maybe it's on a, smart, a smartphone or whatever tablet, whatever and uh, have that ready for just a few minutes. And I wanna encourage you to be sure and stay all the way to the end of this message because we're gonna do something very special. We've got an activity together at the end. It's gonna be awesome. And we're gonna do communion together as I've already been saying. So I hope you've got your, your stuff ready for that. Uh, so stay to the end. Do you ever feel like everything that you were counting on and you thought you needed for success had disappeared. Things like all the normal stuff that it's not that glamorous, but you just count on like your job, your income, school for the kids, good health, a strong economy, Vacation travel for when you're feeling tired and you just need to pick me up. Things like confidence, certainty, connection. That's one of those things we just sort of count on in life, connection. And especially for milestone events, as like right now we're coming into the season of graduations and weddings. And that connection that we would count on is missing. And Worst of all, when there's a funeral and you want that connection and you want that closure, but it's disappeared. That's how, that's how it feels right now. Today, we're gonna wrestle with the scripture. I'm gonna do something a little bit different than I normally do. And I'm even gonna push back a little bit on scripture. We're gonna wrestle with it. We're gonna be honest about the tension and we're gonna look at it together. So let's go to Romans 5 three to five. We can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they help us develop endurance and endurance develops strength of character and character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. And this hope will not lead to disappointment. Okay, so now wait a minute. Let, let's, just, let's just slow down a little bit. That's, that's great to just read that with a smile, but let's just look at that one phrase at a time. We can rejoice when we run into problems and trials. What do you do when you know you're supposed to rejoice in trials, but your heart is aching? It feels like the core of your body is burning. Your mind is reeling and it's so hard to even think clearly, but you have to because there are important decisions to be made. You're exhausted. And there's a feeling in the pit of your stomach, a feeling of dread. Maybe at times you've even uh, been afraid for your life. He goes on and says, we can rejoice for we know that trials help us develop endurance. Well, can I just raise my hand and say, I don't want that. I don't want to learn endurance. I would much rather be sitting on a beach taking selfies of my bare toes and posting them on social media than having and puffing my way up a steep mountain. I'm telling you, laziness sounds way funner than endurance. 
He goes on and says, and endurance develops strength of character. I don't want strength of character. I just want to send the kids back to school because I feel like I'm failing. I'm failing in the education department and I'm failing in the patience department. Why can't I just go back to doing what I know I'm already good at? It sounds way easier. He goes on in the Bible and says, and character strengthens our confident hope. And this hope will not lead to disappointment. Hey, can't we just start with a hope? Do we have to go through this whole trial thing to get there? And what is hope anyway? Is it just wishful thinking? This, this past week, there was a New York Times headline. It's just four words. The drug of hope. And my first thought was, sign me up. Send me a couple bottles. <laughs> But, you know, obviously I'm not going to take it because it's not been prescribed. Uh, the drug they're talking about is, is remdesivir. And uh, it's a drug that has been tested in the past and not really uh, been successful. But now a U.S. study says that this drug is speeding up the recovery time for the COVID virus. But then at the same time, simultaneously, a, a Chinese study said, but it doesn't help the critically ill. You know what the dictionary says about hope? Hope is the feeling that what is wanted can be had or that events will turn out for the best. And we're looking at hope as a noun. Uh, another meaning is that it's the hope is the grounds for that feeling I just described. The basis, the foundation for the feeling that what, can, what is wanted can be had or that things are going to turn out for the best. A third definition, I love this. A person or thing in which expectations are centered. Hope is a person or thing in which expectations are centered. So biblical hope is not just wishful thinking. It is the expectation of something certain, like the second coming of Christ. I, I don't hope for it like, oh, it'd be nice if it happened. I hope for it because it is certain. It is going to happen. God's word says Jesus is going to return. That's biblical hope. It's hope in something that is certain. It is going to happen. Doug Clay said, the world's idea of hope may be a desired outcome. In other words, the world hopes for that this thing will happen, that that shirt will go on sale, that my job will go back. The world hopes for those outcomes. But the biblical definition of hope is confidence in that which is certain. Not much is certain right now, but God and his word. And aren't you glad that that is certain? Ironically, as Christians, we do not hope in things we can control. But we hope in the only one we cannot control, God. He is our hope. I love what it says in the Bible in Hebrews chapter 13. For God has said, listen to this. This is God's promise to you. God has said, I will never fail you. I will never abandon you. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. So I will have no fear. And that word will is a word that implies choice. So the Lord is my helper, so I choose not to fear. I will have no fear. If I could summarize this whole message in just one, one big idea, it'd be this. Your hope won't disappoint you when your hope is in the Lord. Your hope won't disappoint you when your hope is in the Lord. Now, I am not talking about the easy button. Let, let's be honest. This is honesty day. Christians around the world have suffered horrible things for centuries. So we're not talking about the easy button. We're talking about our hope. Our hope is not in our circumstances. Our hope is in God alone. And in Jesus, you can rest in this life and in the life to come. So I'm starting a new series today called hashtag hope wins. Hope wins. And now I wanted you to hear what hope was before you heard that sort of cheesy title. 
I'm not talking about flippant, wishful thinking. I'm talking about hope in God who is certain. About 150 years ago, someone wrote a, a Christian song, a hymn, called The Solid Rock. And this is what it says. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. And when it says, I, I dare not trust the sweetest frame, he's talking about, I dare not trust anything else, any other concept, any other person, thing, or circumstance. I dare not trust anything else, no matter how sweet it seems. But I must only wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Sinking sand. So I want to ask you, what are you standing on today? Who or what are you standing on? I love this, that this song is called The Solid Rock because it's talking about Jesus. He is our solid rock. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. So you know what that means? Jesus is the better Mount Rainier. Jesus is the better Mount Rainier. Mount Rainier is a big, glorious, majestic rock. And Jesus is better than that. He is the solid rock that you can build your life on. Because even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. That's Jesus. That's Jesus. I love what it says in the Bible in Romans chapter 8. And we know, somebody say, we know. We know that God causes everything. Somebody say everything. We know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. So guess what? God even commands trials and troubles, problems and issues and challenges. God commands them to turn around, work together for your good, according to his purposes, which are good for you. So your hope won't disappoint you when your hope is in the Lord. Let's circle back to Romans 5. We can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they will help, that they help us develop endurance. And endurance develops strength of character, and character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. And this hope will not lead to disappointment. For we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. When we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. Your hope won't disappoint you when your hope is in the Lord. It's from the Bible. I'd like to pray for you now. If you've been doing other stuff, would you just pause just a minute and let's just quiet ourselves and let's pray. Lord, I want to thank you for the love that we just read about, for your love. Love that would compel you to go to the cross for us. Love that would compel you to pour your Holy Spirit in our lives so that we would know all about your love. And Lord, I thank you so much that you right now are causing all the challenges, all the things that have disappeared, all the issues, all the trials, you are causing it to collaborate for our good. And so Lord, I just speak a blessing over everyone who's hearing this live stream. Lord, I pray, Lord, in Jesus' name, that you would help us to put our hope in you. And I just, I, I, I speak the blessing that you are working, you are love, you are trustworthy, and Lord, you are our hope. And I thank you for that, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. 
I want you to know that Jesus' love for you is unconditional. It was his love that compelled him to go to the cross and lay down his life for you. And three days later, he rose from the dead so that you could have eternal life. And eternal life starts now when you put your faith in Jesus. Jesus is calling you to come and be his apprentice. And so I wanna invite you today to put your faith in Jesus, to, to begin to follow him and continue his work. How do you do that? Turn from your sin, turn your life over to God, and let him lead. In other words, become his apprentice. I, I would love to um, just pray for you and to lead you in a prayer, to coach you in a prayer. Uh, if, if today you would like to put your faith in Jesus, let's do it. Let's do it right now. Don't wait another minute. So I'll just say a line, uh, a phrase, and you repeat it back, but don't say it to me, say it to Jesus. All right, are you ready? Let's pray together. And even if you've prayed this prayer before, let's do it again right now. Let's do it, ready? Jesus, you say, Jesus, I invite you to into my life. Please forgive me of my sins and make me new. I choose to follow you starting now. I am your apprentice. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, the answer is always yes. So if you prayed that prayer, I would really like to know. I, I really want to cheer you on and just give you some next steps. So if you prayed that prayer today, please just go to the website. Scroll down a little ways on the home page and you'll see a little button that says connect card. Would you just fill out a connect card? Give me uh, just enough info information so I can get back to you, send you an email uh, of encouragement and uh, just, just uh, bless you. Uh, and at the bottom of the connect card online, there's a little box to check that says, I made a decision to follow Jesus today. Check the box and I will know and I'll begin to pray for you. That's a promise. And our team will pray for you as well. Well, it's really cool what we're going to transition to now. In the early church, uh, just after Jesus rose from the dead, they had a, a, a little tradition. And the church would gather, and we're, we're talking like a lot of, of believers would gather together, and they would have what was called a fellowship meal or uh, a, an agape love feast. Agape love is the kind of love that God has. They would get together, the church would get together, and this meal was a place to forgive one another. It was a place to express affection to one another. And it was a place to strengthen relationships in the church, in the body of Christ. So they get together, they have this big old meal. I'm picturing a big potluck meal. I love potlucks. <laughs> and uh, after the meal, they would celebrate the Lord's Supper, which was Jesus' final meal with the disciples before he went to the cross. It was a very significant symbolic meal. So we can't gather physically uh, as one big group, as, as a church today, but we can do the other things they did when they gathered. We can forgive one another. We can express affection for one another with a text or a call or a FaceTime. And we can strengthen our relationships in other ways. We're still the church, even if we're meeting in different homes. So I'd like to pray for you before we uh, go in and take communion together. And uh, I, I want to, uh, yeah, part of my prayer, I'd like to pray for you what I pray uh, for many of you specifically by name every morning. And uh, it's some things I pray over our church every single morning. Would you pray with me? Dear Lord, I pray that even in this uh, time of physical separation, I pray that we, your church, would be more united than ever. I pray that you would strengthen us, Lord. Strengthen us by your Spirit. And Lord, right now, I, I just want to pray the way you taught us to pray, which was not so much about me, but it was about us. And so, Lord, I pray, give us today the food that we need. For those who are struggling, Give us the food that we need and forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those who sin against us. And don't let us yield to temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, Lord. Lord, we're thankful for who you are and what you did for us. In Jesus' name.
Amen. Amen. All right. Well, if you if you got some bread or a cracker or a bread substitute or something, why don't you take it right now and uh, hold on to it just for a second? I want to read the story of the Last Supper, the Lord's Supper. First Corinthians 11. On the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread, just like we're doing, or our bread substitutes, <laughs> and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and said, this is the symbolic part, this is my body which is given for you. Now you know what? That you is plural in the original language. Jesus said, this is my body which is given for all of you. Do this in remembrance of me. So before we eat, would you repeat after me? Everybody, repeat after me, very simply. Thank you, Jesus, for your body given for us. Amen. Let's eat. So just like at my family dinner tables, we're all just talking, mouths open. We all got to get our words in there, our stories. It's just how it is. This is how this is a good old family, a family meal. Only I'm talking on camera with my mouth full. So that's that's awesome. Would you take some grape juice or some other substitute? This is a carbonated beverage <laughs> that I'm having today. Verse 25, the, the story goes on. In the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant. That's a big deal. It's the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you drink it. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. Before we drink it, would you repeat after me? Thank you, Jesus, for your blood shed for us. Let's drink together. Even though we're keeping our distance for safety reasons, we are one in the Lord and we are the body of Christ. In Matthew 16, it's written that Jesus said, I will build my church and all the powers of hell will not conquer it. Somebody say amen to that. So I hope that you'll remember what we talked about today. Your hope will not disappoint when your hope is in the Lord. Your hope will not disappoint you when your hope is in the Lord. I'm so glad that you are here today. Two other things. I hope that you will come and join us this Thursday night. Join me for uh, the National Day of Prayer. It's not going to look like a typical National Day of Prayer. It's going to look like an NFC prayer meeting. And we've got some other ideas about prayer meetings to come. But this is kind of a, our, our first try at this. We want to do a big old Zoom video prayer meeting where we can see each other. We can hear different people pray. It's going to be awesome. We just sent you an email in the last few days about this with a link. Uh, but if, if you're not sure where that is or you want to you want to come join us, then uh, just go sign up on our, on our website. Go to sign ups on our website or the app and uh, sign up for the, the National Day of Prayer meeting and then we'll just send you out a link because uh, you'll, you'll need that link to be able to find the prayer meeting, all right? And then next Sunday, we're gonna be celebrating Mother's Day. It's gonna be so awesome. And we have figured out a way to give every person who's tuning, every mom, every mom, let me clarify that, every mom who's tuning in live to the service, a free gift, free gifts for all the moms during the service next week. We are better together. I'm glad you're here today. Thank you, Pastor Garen. That was such an incredible message. Thank you for reminding us of the hope that we have in Jesus. If you're new with us, I just want to invite you again, encourage you to connect with us. And you can do that by texting NEW to NFC to 97000 or go to our website and fill out the online connect card. And if you have a prayer request, we want to pray for you. Just text the number that's on the screen and we want to believe for God to do the impossible in your life. And now we have uh, Kids Church Online. So you can look at the videos in this YouTube channel. And we are starting a new curriculum for Kids Church this week. And so it's going to be great. Yeah. Click the downloadable link. Do some activities with your kids at home. Mm -hmm. And NFC, we will see you next week. Be blessed. Bye.